Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is LaTanya. I am the host of the channel Smarty Style and if you are new to this channel, typically I upload vlogs on a weekly basis that primarily focus on my life as a teacher, but every now and then, given the circumstances or the time of year, I sprinkle in other things as well. And on occasion, I do a sit down video that is specifically geared towards a particular topic. And this happens to be one of those videos. So in this video I'm going to talk about the differences in teaching elementary school versus teaching middle school so for those of you that are new to the channel or this is the first video that you've watched of mine I am in my or I just completed actually my 15th year of teaching and 14 out of those 15 years I taught elementary school so this past school year was my very first year teaching middle school I taught eighth grade social studies and language arts and so um, when I made the transition to middle school I knew that at some point I was going to be making a video where I compared my experiences in the two different levels of schooling a just because I wanted to and B because I know a lot of teachers would be interested in something like that because as you teach for a couple years you start to think about changes you might want to make and I know a lot of teachers think about making the switch from elementary school to middle school or middle school to elementary school so my hope is this video is helpful for those of you that came to it for that reason and if you're just curious then I also hope that this video gives you some information that you we're curious to learn. So um, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I actually opened up some questions or um, opened up the opportunity for people that follow me on Instagram to ask me questions that they have specifically in relationship to my experience teaching both elementary and middle school. And so this video is going to be focused on me answering those questions. Uh, before I do that, I do think it is um, important for me to give you a little bit of background about who I am and how I came to this point in my career and I did take notes because I didn't want to leave anything out and I wanted to make sure I had all the questions in one place so me looking down is just me referring to those notes that I've taken so um, first I just want to kind of explain my personality in general I have been described as being a very like direct person in terms of um, my communication style I'm not aggressive but apparently the way that I speak comes across as very direct to people but not in an intimidating way if that makes any sense I also have a very dry sense of humor, um, which I've always known. I enjoy some good sarcasm. And um, I like kids, but I'm not someone that when I see babies or little tiny kids that I feel like compelled to go and like talk to that kid or pick up that baby and that may seem like a weird thing to say but it will make sense as I like kind of talk about my journey and like why I made some of the choices that I made. Um, I did not grow up thinking that I would be a teacher. This was not a profession that was even anywhere near my consciousness. I thought I was going to be a lawyer and I didn't decide to teach until I was in my late 20s. So even though that's relatively young, this wasn't a path that I knew I was going to go down, you know, when I entered into college. Um, so that is kind of some background on me. I have taught very briefly a summer school stint and in kindergarten I have taught third grade for a few years fourth grade for a few years but the most of my teaching career was spent teaching fifth grade um, at the elementary school level and then last year was my first year teaching eighth grade so let's just talk about the early part of my career so my first year of teaching I taught in a different district than what I'm in now and I interviewed and got hired on the spot to teach fifth grade with another new teacher there were only two of us at in the grade level at that time and it, it went well I don't remember um, like having any sort of traumatic experiences and even when I told I was told I was going to be teaching fifth grade I was okay with it I was a little disappointed because prior to that I had spent a lot of time just observing and volunteering in like second grade classes and even some first grade classes and I just kind of envisioned myself being in that environment making all these cute little projects and doing cute teacher things but I was still okay with teaching fifth grade um, my second year teaching I transferred to the district I'm in now because it's closer to home it is a district that is tied to the high school that I went to and I had a lot of um, 
connections to the neighborhood. And so when I got to my second school, um, I started off teaching fourth grade and I taught that for a few years. And some conversations I would have with the principal at the time, she in one of those conversations told me that she would never ever, like and she was so adamant about it, she would never ever put me in a grade lower than third grade. And at the time I was like, I don't know why, like why are you saying that? And I was all, you know, low key a little like offended because I didn't know why she was saying that but I didn't really say anything back because I was a newer teacher and I wasn't going to like become argumentative with the principal um, but like it, it was just odd to me that she said that. Um, so she moved me eventually from fourth to fifth grade and that was a blessing because I enjoyed fifth grade. I loved the age. I loved the team that I work with. I spent um, I want to, I think I taught fifth grade for about seven years or so and it was just an amazing experience. Like it was the perfect place for me to be. Like the age was right, the curriculum was right. I loved it. Um, and during my years teaching fifth grade, I eventually got to the place where I knew it was inevitable that at some point I was going to teach middle school. I didn't know when and I didn't have any specific plans in place but in the back of my mind I always knew that at some point in my teaching career I am going to teach middle school and there were times during that time where the middle school teacher or the middle school principal I should say um, at the middle school that I work now she no longer is the the principal because she's moved on but she was actively like you know encouraging me to come on over to middle school um, a along with a friend of mine because she thought like our skill set and our style of teaching would just do very well at the middle school level but I was very happy where I was at and I kind of put it off um, so just keep that in mind like I always knew that I was going to teach middle school I just didn't know when so eventually I leave that school and then I go to a new school uh, because this was a brand new school in the district and I wanted the experience of opening up a new school because at the time I was very certain that I was going to go down the administrative path which now I'm not so certain that that is something that I want to pursue um, but I was more certain of it then so I wanted to have the experience of opening up a brand new school because I thought it's a great experience it's a good resume builder so I went to the new school in my district I ended up being placed in third because there was only one fifth grade class at the school and several teachers wanted to teach that fifth grade class and the principal chose to put me in a third grade class she chose to put me in a third grade class, which I thought was kind of odd because I was one of the most experienced teachers with this new staff that was being put together. And um, the teacher that she gave the fifth grade position to was relatively new to teaching. And I had had several years of experience teaching fifth, had success with fifth. And so I just was not sure why she made that choice. And I, hopefully that doesn't come across as like arrogant, but I was surprised. Um, but when I talked to her, she just felt like uh, because of my experience that she can kind of put me in any grade level and I would be able to handle it and so that was her decision behind it and so I said okay um, so I taught third at that school for two years and that is when I had the understanding of why that principal said to me I will never put you in anything below um, third grade because she was right because I taught third grade the beginning of third grade for me was very rough the beginning of the year because you're essentially teaching big second graders and they need a lot of reassuring and a lot of hand holding and a certain tone of voice in a certain way and a certain sweetness <laughs> that I just don't think comes as naturally to me as it should if I'm teaching kids that small. Now that's not to say that as time progressed and the kids understood like my sense of humor and my personality and my demeanor and I kind of understood them and that age group it was a, a it was a really good um, experience. I really enjoyed the students but the beginning of the year was always rough just kind of getting um, third graders acclimated to the type of demands that I was putting on them that I feel were age appropriate, but I think some third graders are just not accustomed to someone like functioning in that way. And honestly, I was teaching third grade with a fifth grade teacher mindset. Like for me, I know where they need to go having been that fifth grade teacher. So I really operated from, I'm getting them ready for the grades to come. I'm getting them ready for their first year of standardized testing. And so, um, it was challenging sometimes because of that. So I did that for two years. My first year was rough 
teaching third and being at a new school because I had left a school that I was just so happy at and so thankful to be at and then this transition was just rough because that family and community feel that I had at my previous school just wasn't there at this school and I'm having to prove myself to parents that don't know me and then having to prove myself to parents that think I'm a little too too much for third grade but after that first year I said let me give it a, another year because maybe it's just rough because it's your first year um, so give it another year and see how you feel and then after that second year of teaching third grade at that school I knew like it's time for me to go ahead and make a move and this is the perfect time for me to try out middle school so for those of you that are debating between should i go to elementary school or middle school um and you're wondering if i can give you the thought process i took to get there i'm saying all that to say i always knew i was going to go there um so me making that transition just wasn't hard for me it was just a matter of time but I will say if you know that you tend to be a little bit more rigorous in your instruction, that you're very into the curriculum you teach, um, you set pretty high standards, that maybe you have a certain demeanor and a sense of humor that is a little bit on the drier side or sarcastic side, you know, middle school is a good fit for you. That's not to say that that doesn't work at the elementary level because it does. Um, but uh, me making the transition was not difficult at all. So that's just a little bit of background as to how I got there from elementary school, how I got to middle school from elementary school. So when I looked at all the questions people submitted on Instagram, they were really kind of all focused on the same two broader topics. Um, and then there was like just this set of miscellaneous questions. So the two broad topics that they were really set on were the comparisons of big kids versus little kids, and then um, questions about workflow and time management. So I'm gonna go through the questions that all fall under the same category, starting with big kids versus little kids. Then I'll move on to time uh, management and workflow. Then I'll talk about some of the mis miscellaneous questions. And then, excuse me, at the end, I will give you my pros and cons for both. So the first question that I got with the big kids versus little kids is, is there a difference in difficulty working with younger versus older kids? For me, in my experience, there isn't. Uh, I don't feel like one group was more difficult than the other. I think for my personality, when I worked with younger kids, I had to be a little bit more conscious about things like tone of voice, facial expressions, demeanor, um, sarcasm, just because at that age, they may not pick up on things the way an older student might pick up on things. So if I had to say any sort of difficulty, I guess that would be it, but any glaring increase in difficulty in dealing with kids in the two varying ages, I haven't experienced that. The second question is asking, what is the or the biggest behavior management change? Uh, the biggest behavior management change is that in middle school, I really just don't feel a need to have a specified system in place. So for many years when I taught em elementary school, especially in the fifth grade level, there was a very specific and defined behavior management system that I had. One year there were magnets on a chart and kids were moving magnets up and down. Um, and then several years there was a ticket system that was correlated to the citizenship categories on report cards and kids had to pull tickets and then there were reports and parents had to sign and all of that was going on. And it worked well for me at the time, don't get me wrong, it was a very solid system that kept me accountable when it came to citizenship grades, kept parents informed, it was very straightforward. Um, when I taught the two years of third grade, grade at um, the new school, I got to a point where I was just tired of that. I was tired of managing a clip chart, um, managing points on class dojo, thinking about a treasure box, thinking like all of that. I just am not good at it uh, because my mind is just focused on other things. So by the time I was rolling into my second year teaching third grade and even maybe towards the end of my first year, I took the clip chart down and we just didn't have one. Like we just didn't have a management system where I was sending a report home to parents in third grade. Now jump to eighth grade, I definitely didn't have one. I don't have like, you do this, then this. You do this, then that. If you do this three times, then this happens. Now there are school rules that kind of deal with some of that with like cell phone usage or um, 
language or fighting at school but in terms of my class there wasn't that um, what I told my eighth graders and this if anyone asked what is your classroom management system in eighth grade was I said to my students I'm chill until I'm not and that was really it like they understood what I meant they knew that what I was saying is I'm pretty laid back I'm pretty chill until it becomes clear that I can no longer be. And so that's not to say the kids were perfectly behaved, but the nice thing about middle school is when someone's doing something and you know they shouldn't be doing it and they know they shouldn't be doing it, you really only have to say so-and-so seriously and then they just kind of look at you like, yeah, I know, I know, and then they'll stop. Um, I didn't have anything really so well I take that back I did have one student who had some more pronounced behavior issues that needed a little bit more monitoring and I was able to quickly revert to some of the things I did in the elementary school or at the elementary school level so I had to chunk his day into sections of time um, he had three yellow cards and his goal was just to maintain those three yellow cards and as juvenile and as basic as that sounds it worked because it was a visual and it really helped him to self-regulate and kept me from just being on his case the whole time so um, I if I had to say which one's easier for me behavior management in middle school is easier it's less tedious less paperwork involved next question is kind of the same it says how is classroom management different I kind of just touched on that with my response to the previous question um, but I will say at the elementary level after recess after lunch you're gonna have to deal with some kind of drama that happened on the playground. So-and-so wouldn't let the other kid play a tetherball. So-and-so took their purple pencil. So-and-so said I was mean. And so I really believed when I taught elementary school, it was important for me to allow kids to say their piece, say their story, talk it through with them, let them do a little talking it out together. And so a lot of time would be spent after recess and lunch kind of you know, talking kids through like, okay, this is what you said. This is how it made her feel. Let's apologize. Um, and there really isn't much of that at the middle school level. There's definitely drama at the middle school level, but it rarely is coming into the classroom to the point where I have to stop instruction to handle it or smooth it out. The next question I thought was pretty interesting and came up a couple of times and some people wanted to know, um, is it more difficult to make connections with students in middle school versus elementary school? And I would say no. I think that if you're a teacher who your one of your primary goals is to connect with students, to enrich the experience they have in your classroom, then that will naturally translate regardless of what grade level you're teaching. What you're connecting with students on is probably going to be different. So when I taught elementary school, me connecting with the student was, you know, just me like talking to them about their friends and recess and just like really lighthearted things. Um, just taking an interest in their life and what they like and, you know, laughing with them and playing a game of tetherball with them, stuff like that. Um, whereas at the middle school level, it is a little bit more of you kind of giving them like an adult perspective on life and friendships and their future and you know maybe sharing some of your experiences that you had at their age and how you work through it so the level and the depth of what you're talking about is definitely different uh, but the ability to do that should translate very well if that is something that just comes naturally to you or that is something that you really make a priority in your teaching and I think that is one of the biggest things I want people to know that have apprehension about going to middle school is that you definitely can still make connections with students and I think it's probably more important and more beneficial to you as a teacher when you're putting in that effort with middle school students um, than it is with elementary school students because at the elementary level there's still a good portion of kids that want to please the teacher that want to come to school that want to do well they're not disenfranchised just yet um, but when you get to middle school especially at eighth grade kids have had experiences uh, kids don't identify themselves as students. They don't like school. They don't want to be there. They think all the teachers are out to get them. And the moment they realize, oh, this teacher is really actually taking an interest in who I am and what I'm about and trying to help me, then it is, it's very fulfilling and it makes, it makes, it just makes a huge difference is what I would say. So, um, that is one thing that I would 
definitely say don't be frightened of. Uh, the next question says, what kinds of, or what kind of question or discussions about identity have you had with middle schoolers that you did in elementary? And this kind of goes in with what I just said. Um, you know, at, at this age, teaching eighth grade, their middle schoolers are really trying to figure out who they are in all aspects of the word. So, um, who they are as a person, what they stand for in terms of friendships, um, uh, where they fall in terms of relationships with the opposite sex or even the same sex. Um, so there have been moments where those kinds of questions have been brought up, but I don't get very involved in them because that is really, you know, dangerous territory. Uh, the couple of times that I've had conversations like that, all I did was make sure the student knew that no matter what the issue was or what they were going through, that I was here to support them and help them in any way that I can. And that was really just kind of how I left it. Cause that, um, I'm not trying to overstep my bounds as a teacher and, you know, say something to them that may go against what is happening in their household. All I can do is say, I'm here for you. I offer you support. And I kind of left it at that because I, you know, I don't want to be called up to the district office, quite frankly, but, um, I did have some of those conversations this year. Um, never really had those conversations at the elementary level, but that's not to say that elementary students were not experiencing that. I just don't think they're as vocal about it at that age because they may not even know how to vocalize those kinds of things just yet. The last one is kids attitude in general towards school. Well, um, I don't think it's surprising in elementary school kids, Generally speaking, I know not every elementary student, they, they like school. They want to go to school. They have fun. They like their teachers. They want their teachers to like them. That is not always the case in middle school. Um, most, not most, that sounds bad. A lot of middle schoolers will report that they think school is boring. It's not fun. They don't think their teachers like them. Um, so it can be a challenge to get some kids motivated. Uh, the first day of school, I do remember saying, okay, I want you guys to turn to your partner and discuss and it was like crickets. They just were looking at me like, no, <laughs> like, we're not gonna discuss. And so there was a lot of me begging, like guys, like come on. Um, and that still happened throughout the year. Uh, but it, you definitely have to work towards finding ways to engage them with things that are relevant to them and being real with them and making content accessible to them and relevant to their day-to-day -day lives. Um, but it is harder to motivate students in middle school because they just are not liking it as much as they did when they were in elementary school. Now there's some kids that still love it and they enjoy being there, but those are fewer and far between at the middle school level in all honesty. All right, the next set of questions focuses on workflow and time management. Um, so a lot of people have questions about like, am I spending more time, less time, which one requires more time outside of the classroom versus the other? So the first question says, what systems do you have in place to manage both classes? So um, just to back up and just, I should have said this in the intro, in my district, I teach, uh, eighth grade and I did not have to go back to school to be recredentialed. So my multiple subjects credential allows me to teach from kindergarten through eighth grade. And the way our middle school is set up is you have a partner teacher. So I have a partner teacher that teaches math and science and then I teach social studies and language arts. I have a homeroom class which is one group of kids and then I have a switch class which is another group of kids. I have an elective and then I have a universal access class. The elective and universal access class doesn't really require a whole lot in terms of grading. So that's never really a factor in me managing my time. My elective class is leadership, which is like the equivalent of ASB. And there are definitely things I have to do outside of the classroom hours to handle that, but I get a stipend for that. So I, it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, so as far as systems that I have in place, everything in my class is separated by homeroom and switch. So I have mailboxes that one set is for the homeroom class, one set is for the switch class. Um, I have record books for my grades. One set is for the homeroom class, one set is for the switch class. Um, and I just keep it that way. I have a Google Classroom. One is for homeroom, one is for switch. So I just grade things and chunk things based on those groups. The two classes are never intertwined. The assignments are relative, no, 
not even relatively. The assignments are the same, but sometimes one class is slightly ahead of the other, and at times that could be a challenge just to make sure I'm keeping track of, oh, okay, in this class we left off here, but in my switch class we left off there. Uh, but just making sure everything is categorized by homeroom and switch is really how I kept things organized and in place uh, this past year. The next question says, is there more work in the elementary or middle school, prepping, grading, etc.?" cetera? Uh, for me, I think there's more work at the elementary level. And I had so many teachers when I was going back and forth on when I was going to apply to go to middle school and what it was gonna be like. So many teachers that had taught in both that were like, once you go to middle school, you are going to kick yourself in the butt for not doing this sooner because there's just less prep. Um, less copies, uh, just, it, it's just different. Like when you teach elementary school, there's some prepping you have to do. You have to cut things for them, copy things a certain way. Just a lot of energy is spent getting that done. Um, and when I started, with the district, we did not have a prep period. There was no, um, in some states you guys call them specials. We didn't have specials, we didn't have PE. We had a minimum day every Monday, but sometimes those minimum days were taken up with staff meetings, so you didn't always have that Monday. So you were just always looking for that time to copy, prep, um, rip out pages of a workbook or whatever it was you were doing, and you aren't really doing that for middle school students. I'm not, you know, ripping pages out of a book for them. Um, I'm not cutting things for them because it's things that they can do. On top of that, I get an hour prep every single day. So 50 minutes every day is just devoted to me to like grade and get caught up. And so I believe, I don't think one, because I have been asked this question, which one works harder? I don't think one works harder than the other. I think it's just a different kind of work and a different level of demand. So while you're prepping a lot at the elementary level and cutting a lot and ripping workbook pages out and you need parents to do this, this, and this because the smaller kids can't do it, at the middle school level, especially teaching social studies, language arts, the volume of grading sometimes is increased. But at this point in society, there's so many things you could use that are digital, that self-grade, that that has also helped. So um, I would definitely say that um, it's, it's a little bit more work intensive at the elementary school level in terms of prepping. Differences, the next question says, are there differences in parent involvement? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, there were times in elementary school where I'm like, I need you all to go home. I don't have anything for you to do. Um, there's too many adults in the classroom right now. I don't need you to volunteer anymore. Um, and at the middle school level, I'm just kind of like, uh... <laughs> Where are they? So, and I didn't need them to volunteer for a lot. There was something that I wanted to do this year. I wanted to have uh, different cultures represented throughout the year. And so I sent out a message saying, if you are from one of these backgrounds and you would like to come in and share your culture with us, I would really appreciate it. And I didn't get really any response. Um, I got a few donations in class from a, a couple parents and it was typically the same parents. Um, yeah, whereas when I taught elementary, if I sent out a message and said, hey, I need some Kleenexes or I need this or that, I could pretty much guarantee that I'll get some. Um, but at the middle school level, I couldn't really guarantee that. Um, the parent involvement in terms of communicating with parents, it was a lot of uh, just kind of like my son has this grade, can you tell me why? Uh, but yeah, they weren't really in the classroom. I think at that age, a lot of parents just assume, well, I think a lot of it is at that age, either the parents are assuming they don't need to be involved that way, or I know this has happened because some parents have told me their kids have explicitly said, do not come into my classroom. I, I'm going to be so embarrassed. So you definitely see less of them uh, in the classroom at the upper grades or in the middle schools. How do I balance grading? Is there more work at home? Um, I had to balance grading this year because the difference in elementary and middle school, at least with my district, is that middle schoolers 
have been trained here to check their grades almost on an hourly basis. So a lot of them think, well, I just took a quiz, so within the hour, that quiz should be in the grade book, how come it's not there? So I would get emails from kids all the time saying, when are you gonna update grades? When are you gonna grade this? How come you haven't gotten that done? And I would get so frustrated because I would wanna say, excuse me, you just took the quiz yesterday. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, but at the same time, at this age, it is important for them to be aware of their grades and whether or not they need to recover credits. So I got to the point where I realized I just have to be more timely with getting things graded. In elementary school, there would be times where I would have just stacks of things that needed to be graded and I would just spend like a marathon day grading and entering grades and it wasn't really a big deal because parents and kids weren't really checking their grades. There would be like one or two parent that was hyper into checking grades at the elementary level and so I would just kind of tell them, yes, I'm gonna enter grades as soon as I can, but it wasn't really a big thing. Here, it was a big thing because in both classes, kids were just like, when are you gonna put this in? When are you gonna put this in? They would be comparing to how fast I was putting grades in versus my partner teacher. And I would have to tell them like, guys, teachers do have lives. Like when school ends, there's meetings I'm going to. Heaven forbid I should wanna exercise, eat, take a nap. And I would try and remind them that my partner teacher is teaching math and science and that grading is very, straightforward in a lot of ways but when you're grading social studies and language arts and their short responses the type of person i am i want to read your response and i'm going to give you some feedback on your response so that just takes time uh but as the year progressed i got better with it and um just had to force myself to sit down and get things just graded in a timely fashion and entered into the grade book and it ulti ultimately made my life easier because then it minimized the emails that I was getting asking me when I was gonna update my grade book. So uh, the next category was just miscellaneous questions. They didn't really fit under the big kids versus little kids or time management and workflow. Um, the first one says, have you changed your teaching style? And I would say absolutely not. Um, I think the most rewarding part was to know that my style of teaching really can translate at the elementary level and the middle school level. I am the same teacher that I was when I taught third graders that I am when I taught eighth graders. Um, of course, the content is different. Uh, maybe word choice and rigor is obviously different given the different ages, but the core of who I am as a teacher and what my focuses are on and my like level of expectation hasn't changed at all in that that has been rewarding to know that I can just be me. Uh, best and worst part about both. The best part of elementary school is just like being surrounded by a certain level of innocence throughout the day. Like just seeing little first graders, even if you didn't teach first, just happy to see you, happy to be at school, and like just living the simplicity of their life through their eyes. Like, they don't, a lot of them don't have major stresses. They're not like sad or depressed about much, um, generally speaking, because we do know there's small kids that are going through things, but just, it allowed me to just kind of stay really young and be silly um, at the elementary level. The worst thing about elementary school, um, I think for me, just dealing with like, like, overbearing parents like parents that don't trust that you know what you're doing and that you truly have the best interest of their child at heart and think that because they're members of pta or they do this on campus that they then have the authority to come in and kind of tell you how you should run your classroom and just feeling like you have to like defend yourself to them that is my least favorite thing about elementary school the best part about middle school is I think I really do like eighth graders. I like the age and I like being able to talk about real and relevant things to them and really kind of getting them to think about things in a broader sense. And I did that in elementary school, but there's only so far they can go because they're young. Um, I like being able to just be sarcastic and give kids a hard time and them understanding sarcasm and like being able to like return it and just being pleasantly surprised by just the fact that they really are just nice people. They're sweet people as long as they trust that you have their best interests in heart, at heart and that you're really there for the right reasons. They really are fun to work with. The worst part about middle school is, oh, this is gonna sound trivial, but 
a 30 minute lunch. When I taught elementary school, we have 40 minutes. Middle school, we have 30 minutes, and that 10 minutes makes a huge difference. Um, so that, I would say, is the worst part about teaching middle school. The next question talks about having kids all day um, when you teach elementary school versus switching. Things I like about having kids all day is that um, if lessons run longer than what I anticipated for, I feel like it's easier for me to make up the time or buy the time somewhere else throughout the day when I have them all day. Uh, versus when I switch kids, if something's running long, I, it stresses me out because now not only am I, am I behind today, but now I'm going to be, be behind, excuse me, now I'm going to be behind tomorrow because this is probably going to have to roll over in tomorrow. Um, so the pros of having kids all day is just a lot more flexibility. As far as cons associated with it, a con of having kids all day is that some days you are just off with a student like you and that student are just not feeling each other on that particular day and that student's going to be there all day no matter what so there's a certain amount of energy that's going to be required you're going to be a little bit taxed by the end of the day um, and that just makes for a stressful day um, so that's the con of having kids all day whereas with middle school if i'm having that kind of feeling or that kind of vibe from a student i just have to tell myself well in a short matter of time you'll get a break they'll go to their next class and then you guys can come back tomorrow and try again so you know there is that. The easiest and hardest transition, um, the easiest and hardest transition, the easiest transition was just the teaching itself. Like the teaching, the connecting with students, the building a good classroom community, I felt like that went very well for me this year. The hardest was just time management with grades um, and just getting adjusted to new websites. Like everything was new to me, like the language arts, site was new the social studies book was new so just adjusting to all the different platforms that I hadn't used before and having a loss of like confidence because I don't have familiarity with those things so that made that was the hardest thing for me to um, adjust to how did I prepare to make the transition so again mentally I was prepared because I knew it was going to happen um, but the other thing that I did is when I found out I was going to be teaching eighth grade I reached out to the principal before the prior school year started and said hey can I come down for a couple hours one day I just want to observe an eighth grade class just so I can see what they're like what they do what they sound like how big are they how small are they how the teacher interacts just so that I could see it for myself and I'm glad I did it because when I left that day I just felt like yeah Yes, this is the right place for me um, I love it I wanted to jump in there and get in those conversations um, and then I just read better than carrots or sticks I think is what it's called to just kind of get a sense of what I should be thinking about now that I'm dealing with older students and I also talked to a friend of mine whose son had just finished eighth grade and he kind of gave his perspective on his experience and his relationships with teachers and what he felt like teachers should do um, and I just listened to him and took that to heart and I think it helped me out quite a bit last differences in staff connections um i will say it is different now hopefully if you're a middle school teacher you don't take this the wrong way but middle school teachers are definitely a different breed of teachers than elementary school teachers they're much more outspoken from my experience much more comfortable saying no um elementary teachers seem to be a little bit more in turn more Elementary teachers seem to be more people pleasers and are willing to kind of do things that they really don't want to do um and as far as me getting fully entwined with the staff this year, I didn't really do that. I actually ate lunch in my room um, during the school year just because I needed like a minute to decompress. Um, everyone's friendly, but you can just tell they're a little bit more like about the business. And then in closing, um, there are questions that we're asking. Is there anything I miss about elementary school? Yes, I just miss having the fluidity of the day of having them all day. Um, I miss like the the routine of the day like being able to know after recess I'm gonna read a picture book and that's gonna happen every single day the same way I miss the innocence of elementary school students the cuteness of them um, so yeah I do miss that but at the same time I feel like middle school is definitely the right place for me to be um, which leads to the next question which do I prefer and why uh, I prefer middle school honestly I think it's just more natural for me and there's also part of me that wants to teach high school uh, but I would have to go back to school to do that and that's really the only thing that's stopping me which is why when I went to middle school I specifically said I wanted to teach eighth because that was as close as I could get um, 
and just like the reasons why I teach and the the things that I'm really into are just more conducive to middle school students. So I, I prefer middle school. If I were to go back and teach elementary, I wouldn't teach anything lower than fifth. That I know. Was making the transition hard? Not really. It was the best decision for me. It was relatively smooth with the exception of transitioning during a year that we had a pandemic. Um, I had great supports. It was great. Um, and then do I have any regrets? I have no regrets. I love it. Um, you know, it's hard to jump out and like take a risk not knowing what's going to happen. I was pretty confident that I was going to like it. So it didn't feel all that risky, but you never really know. Um, that first day of school, I was like, let's see what happens. And luckily, um, it went well and it just got better from there. So I have zero, zero, zero regrets in my decision to leave elementary and go to middle school. So that is my elementary versus middle school video. If you are in the middle of like debating this for yourself or thinking about it for the future, I certainly hope that it helped. If you have any additional questions that I didn't answer, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below and I will answer them as best as I can. Um, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do that. But if you like this video and you found it helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a great day and I will talk to you later.